How you doing? Come on in, sit down. Let's get going on our weekly questions. We got about three different questions this week, all real estate related, of course. And I'll just jump right into it. First off, we have a question from Molly C. She says, "I saw an MLS listing that said CDOM and DOM. What does this mean? I guess she's searching online for homes, and she must be looking on Wizza or something and seeing different fields. And okay, so she's wondering what this is." CDOM is cumulative days on market and DOM is just straight days on market. But basically they're both standing for how long the property has been listed. So you can get an idea of how long it's been on the market. You know, the average days on market used to be 99 or so. The average days on market now is about 58, depending on the area it's in. So that's always changing. But, um, you know, we use every piece of information we can get, every statistic we can get to kind of evaluate a seller situation and, and the property condition and that type of thing for negotiation purposes. So anyway, that's long answer for what CDOM and DOM mean. It's basically how long the property has been on the market. Uh, All right. Next up, we've got a question from Erica Z and she says she's buying a multifamily building with tenants in it. Should I kick them out and get my own or should I, or should I keep them in there? Well, that's an interesting question. I have to sort of answer that question with questions. If you were one of my agents sitting here, I'd, they're used to it. I, I like to answer questions with a lot of other questions before I'll give my official answer. So, Erica, I guess I'm wondering, when you put the contract on the property, did you include a form called the Rental Property Verification Writer, which uh, commits the seller basically to giving you information about their expenses, about the leases, about how much rent there is, what improvements they've done on the property, that type of thing. So. Do you have copies of the leases? Do you have applications from when the people who are living there applied to move into the property? Um, from the information you've received from the seller, are you happy with the lease amount that the current tenants are paying? So um, I guess also does it, you know, it's, it matters to me if there's some vacant units so that you need to do some work on. Maybe you want to work on getting those properties updated and occupied while you still have rental income coming in from the existing tenants. So there's a lot of things to consider, uh, a lot of questions I've got before I would really answer that question. It's, it sort of all depends. But thanks for the question, Erica. If you want to ask f- further questions or talk further, you can send in another question, podcasts at hermanlondon.com. So, all right, moving on. We've got one from Tom M. Tom says, do I need an agent to represent me as a buyer if the seller already has an agent? Well, it's a good it's a good question. I think it's a fair question. And since you specifically said, do I need an agent to represent me? I want to answer honestly. I'm sure you're not expecting me to say this, but no, I don't think that you need an agent to represent you. Technically, you can represent yourself. Uh, maybe you're an attorney and you have experience with that type of thing. But um, should you represent or should you have an agent represent you as the buyer? And I would say absolutely yes. And, you know, there's a few reasons. And one of them being that, I think a lot of people think they'll, if they call the listing agent, they'll somehow save commission and they won't. You know, the seller is committed to paying a certain amount of commission. So if the, if there's no buying agent, then the listing agent will just keep the full commission essentially to not represent you. So there, other than just the commission details of the, of the situation here, I guess, you know, there's, it's also the main reason to have a buyer's agent is so that you have someone in the corner with you. Um, you want someone to help you with pricing statistics. You don't want to pay too much for the property. You don't want to make a lowball offer and insult the sellers. Um, you want to know the market to know if it's really popular, if you need to um, use some extra negotiating strategies, or if you might be the only buyer, that type of thing. Um, you need some help with negotiating inspections. What ins- inspector should I use? What inspections should I get? What's it fair to ask for? What When do I have to ask it? What form should I ask it on? You know, your buyer's agent will help you with all that type of thing. And then uh, one of the things I enjoy about working with the buyer is helping them fill out the contract. You know, our our contract is not like a document that we write every time. It's a standard. We have a set of standard documents that all realtors use. And so we're basically filling in the blanks. And I think it's really interesting to kind of look at a buyer's situation 
and figure out what they want and what they need and how they kind of want the art of the deal to be set up. And that's how we can help you fill out the contract to get, you know, your, your needs best protected. So, uh, actually that's all my questions for this week. So if you have questions, we'd love to hear from you. We'll either answer them on our podcast or we can answer them here on our questions show and, uh, the, just email in podcast at hermanlondon.com. And, or you can just call me directly, 314-210-5115. And so that's it for this week. Take care and have a great day.